Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check out the link in the description below to get started with two months of premium membership for free. Hi everyone. So I literally just finished this sketchbook, so I figured this week's video could be me sharing it with you guys. Here are the specs for the sketchbook if you would like to know more about it. If you've watched a few of my previous sketchbook tours, you'll know what I've chosen for this sketchbook because I pretty much go for the same thing almost all the time. Although the next sketchbook I use will probably be a different brand just because I have quite a big stack of blank sketchbooks waiting for me on my shelves. <laughs> and I can't really justify buying a new one at the moment, so I should probably use the ones I've got on hand. I think that would probably be the sensible thing to do. So we'll see what I choose next. But for now, this is that, and uh, let's jump into this one. So I started a sketchbook in September 2019 and finished it this week, April 2020. However, um, most of the work in it was done between February and April 2020 because I started it, did a couple pages and then Inktober happened and then Christmas and I was away for a month and so I didn't do much work in there at the, at the beginning. So most of what's in there is February to April. I usually choose the sketchbook with a card cover and I try to find the ones that have a light coloured cover because I like painting on top of the cover when I can. I find that as a last thing to do in the sketchbook, it rounds it up really nicely and I feel really accomplished with the sketchbook if I manage to do something nice on the cover. So I usually try and spend some time on the front like this. This is the last thing I did in this entire sketchbook. It's painted in gouache and I'm really happy with how it turned out to the point that I think I'm probably going to make it a Patreon print. It might go as a print on my shop but not for a few weeks. For the time being it will be Patreon only print. So these were the first two sketches I did in this sketchbook. I did this sketch during a video that you can watch here and I also did a full painting from it afterwards so you can see here. And this sketch is one that I really like. Sometimes I have sketches I really like that I don't feel like turning into paintings and this is one of them. I think it just works well as a sketch but uh, it was one that I was really happy with the idea for. So this page is probably the messiest in the entire sketchbook and with this particular sketchbook my aim was to be less controlled and to experiment with being a lot looser, a lot more experimental, a lot more messy. So generally with my sketchbooks, if you've watched a few of my sketchbook tours, you'll know that I tend to do things like this a lot per page. I tend to do fairly finished concept sketches that look nice and more or less polished. but. Um, I find that although this is really enjoyable for me and I feel fulfilled once I finish a sketch like this, it's not that beneficial to my overall process. I don't have any artistic release, artistic catharsis in my sketchbooks. They are st if they're too stiff and controlled like this, I don't have an outlet for any kind of idea that might not be amazing but still something I want to sketch. I don't have an outlet for experimentation, I don't have an outlet for anything that's a bit more risky. So I think my sketchbooks should be where I take risks and should be where I just experiment and go a bit wild. So I've been trying to loosen up a bit in the sketchbook so there's a lot of me uh, trying different things out and things don't working and not working out and stuff like that which I'm really happy with. So this page is me doing lots of little trying out ideas for my second day of Inktober 2019. Um, I'll put it on the screen here so you can see what I ended up being but initially I wanted the person to have their head half uh, Im immersed in a frozen lake and I was experimenting with having their head in white like this and painting the lake black and use a white pen to draw on the cracks in the ice. Obviously I didn't do that in the end and I really like this drawing from 2019. It's one of my favourites from my 2019 series I think, um, but this page was me researching it. So this is when I start getting a bit experimental. I was trying to be looser, this is without reference and using watercolour pencils which is something that I'm experimenting with at the moment. I really like that I can take some water and start shading in or muddling all the late or the lines whenever I want. And watercolour pencils are also really soft and really vibrant in colour so they're really enjoyable to work with for sketching at least uh, in my opinion. 
And this was just me experimenting with brush pens. So you'll see a lot more of these straight in pen drawings in the sketchbook because it's a technique that I discovered I really enjoyed recently. So I did a lot of sketching like that in this, in this book. You may have seen me paint these in a video, I'll put it up there if you want to watch it. These two are in watercolour, these two are in gouache. These were my attempt at maybe starting the uh, Meds 50 Head Challenge, started by Ahmed al Duri, I think his name is pronounced on YouTube. He's amazing, he does regular like exercise challenges, like drawing 100 heads or 50 hands, that kind of thing. And this one was, I think, 50 heads in 10 days. And I decided to give it a go, but at the time I was really busy and I wasn't sure I'd managed to do many. And I didn't, in fact, I managed to do these. And that was pretty much it. But it still got some practice in. This one is available as a real-time video on my Patreon because it's my favourite. I really like these two. This one didn't work out very well. But that's exactly what I did the exercise because I think um, I need some practice painting heads and this was really enjoyable. More experimenting with watercolour pencils for this one. Once again. And this one I'm in the process of turning into a painting. You may have seen me try and start it in my acrylic video here, uh, but I'm, I've started it again and I'm liking it more, so maybe I'll share that with you at some point. And this sketch I love. <laughs> I need to try it again because I haven't quite finished the idea yet and I'm not entirely sure what direction I'm going to take with it, but I definitely want to pick it up again at some point. This is me experimenting a little bit more with sketching with colour. I want to become more comfortable with using colour more often, so I've been trying to push myself to use colours in my sketches in this sketchbook and not just stick to the ones I'm used to, like dark browns and greys. This sketch became a Patreon postcard. And so did this one. This is one probably of my favourite sketches in this whole sketchbook. For some reason the idea came really clearly in my head and I sketched it out immediately and I, I really like it. I like the colours and I think I might change the anatomy a bit because that neck is a bit long and that face is a bit too geometric but I, I might paint that one. This is definitely an idea that I would very much like to explore as a painting. This sketch right here became this painting. And this piece, along with this piece right here, were both created for an online group show that I'm currently a part of. It's currently live on the Warwick Wild website if you would like to go have a look. My pieces are for sale on there and there's a bunch of other really amazing paintings too. The link is in the description if you like dark art. I strongly recommend you have a look because there's a lot of really, really cool stuff there. And then this page was just me again experimenting with doodling ideas. Here's an example of a really messy page where I started sketching straight in pen for a lot of this. A lot of this is without any references, so all of this actually is without any references. This one I think I took myself as a reference. But other than that, this is all without reference, and this is all without reference. And I did that a lot in a sketchbook. I use references a lot if I'm trying to do a more finished piece, something that's more controlled, something that needs to be more polished. But if I'm just working in my sketchbook, I find it really useful to try and sketch without reference as much as possible because it consolidates my knowledge, it consolidates anything I have learnt, and it validates for me that I have those skills. So if I keep using references, I start doubting that I actually know how to draw anything. Uh, whereas if I try to push away the references, I realise that I have learnt, I have evolved, I have progressed, and I am able to come up with stuff um, without any references needed. So it's it's a nice way to practice and it's a nice way to feel a bit more confident also. This page was supposed to be an exploration of thumbnails and poses for a bigger painting that I want to do but I wasn't really in the mood to do that on that day so as you can see I didn't really finish it and I haven't actually come to a solution that I really like yet so I have to be, I'll be exploring that painting a lot more in the future. And this page is with reference doodling warm-ups here. It was in the morning before it was to start work properly. I took some random pictures on Pinterest and tried to draw them straight in pen. 
and this was without any reference here. So something you'll see a lot more of in this sketchbook is this sort of thing here. I have some uh, Faber-Castell Artist Pit brush pens and I realised that after years and years of them collecting dust in my drawers, I actually really enjoyed using them to sketch. <laughs> so I've done that a lot in the sketchbook. Sketching straight in brush pens on my pages instead of using a pencil. So here you go, once again, no reference sketching straight in pen here, as well as here. And this is a more finished sketch because I still, this is still the kind of thing that I really enjoy doing in a sketchbook, so I'll, I'll still be doing it. But I tend to warm up with this sort of thing, and then while I do this, I generally come up with an idea that I want to see a bit more finished and a bit more polished, and that's when I turn to doing something a bit more like this. So generally with brush pens, when I decide to sketch with them, I use a lighter colour to do the first initial sketch and then once I'm happy with most of it I'll go back in with a darker colour like you can see here the dark blue to draw over the lines that I think worked best. Again a more finished sketch here because I had the idea in my head and it felt like it would work nice as a finished sketch and this little study here was done from reference and you can see me paint it in my acrylic video I'll have it in the description or up here whatever and this was my first try at using my new acrylic paints um, it was a practice to see if I could use them a little bit similarly to watercolors and I, I really loved using them in that way and I've done a few paintings in that way since specifically the two ones I showed you earlier that are part of the group show And then this sketch was supposed to be a painting, I wanted to do a full page painting in the sketchbook. It's less pressure to do a full, a full painting in a sketchbook and if it turns out well then good, I've got an extra painting. And if not then it's no big deal because it was in the sketchbook. Um, but I love the idea but I haven't quite pinpointed exactly what pose I want for it, what composition works for me. So I'll need to keep exploring this because I love the concept but I haven't quite decided on how I want the finished composition to look, so I'll need to try some few more thumbnails out first. Ah, and these two are the sketches for the two paintings that are part of the show that I showed you earlier. So this one is of this one, and this one is of this one. So what I did is I basically sketched out the final drawing onto my sketchbook and then I used some carbon paper and transferred both sketches onto their final paper using that. And then once I was done with those two sketches I added some extra stuff on top. Once again a no reference doodle with like as you can see here the lighter brush pen colour as an under underdrawing and then I go in with a darker brush pen to create more definite lines. And this was a sketch I think I did either a tiny bit before or a tiny bit after the UK went into lockdown and we were social distancing and all that. And you'll see that a lot of the sketches I do from this point on seem very inspired by the state of mind of the world around me. And it, it was very interesting because I don't voluntarily try to find sketches that fit what everyone's going through or what I'm personally going through even. I don't voluntarily draw conscious inspiration from what's going on around me, but it's very clear that my state of mind was um, leaking into my inspiration quite a lot. Again with the straight in pen loose drawings, and this one here I tried to turn into a more finished sketch on the next page. And the idea is that the person is holding this really heavy tiger that is dead and turning into ribbons. But uh, I'm still to find a pose I like. I'm not very good at drawing animals, so I need to find some references that work for the kind of pose I'm looking for, for the tiger. And uh, it's going to be a lot of work to draw this piece, so it's probably going to take me a while. And I'm probably going to restart it again a few times before I find a pose that I like. So this is the preliminary idea. It gives me a good idea of what the basic concept is, and then I'm going to try and expand on that at some point. And again, this I think is inspired a lot by my state of mind and by the things happening around me at the time. I think it relates in my own mind to how we need to be close to each other with social animals, we need the interaction, the loving interaction with other people, 
and at the same time at the moment we are bad for each other <laughs> and it's such a dichotomous relationship it's such a complex situation something that none of us are very well equipped to navigate and I find that really interesting and so a lot of it kind of went into that drawing and again here straight in pen sketch thing um, I've started using also some highlighters to create more shadows in each of the drawings I found that that works quite well you can see more of that here so I used a like light pastel blue highlighter I think for this or maybe a green I don't remember but as you can see again, uh, light green pen first, and then I went in with a dark blue to finalize the lines, and then I used a blue highlighter to create more shadow. I love this sketch. When I first did it, it really creeped me out. <laughs> but now I find it really endearing for some reason. I don't know why, I just want to pat it on the head and it makes me sort of happy. This was a more finalised sketch um, that I really like. I think the poses, especially the hands, are a bit janky and I could probably, you know, work on that a bit. But these were without references, so I'm still fairly happy about how it turned out. And I seem to have a thing for ribbons at the moment. I'm drawing a lot of ribbon -y stuff. So this was um, inspired by that. And these are with reference, so the general pose of the two characters here was with a, re with, a re with a reference and the monkey was with a reference also and then I added the mask and here I added the snaky thing. I like these two ideas actually, I feel like they would make nice t-shirt designs. I mean, I'm thinking of doing a bunch of t-shirt designs at the moment. I quite like the graphic nature of t-shirt design stuff and I want to use my iPad and procreate a bit so I might make maybe make a video where I do a bunch of different designs. I don't know if that would be something you'd be interested in but um, these two I quite like to maybe turn into designs for that. Um, I would push them a bit further. I think they're a bit too simple at the moment. I want them to go a bit further, especially that one but I'm not sure what direction I'll take yet. A Tarsia from reference because I'm trying to get more into drawing animals but I particularly like the animals with like gnarly hands and stuff. <laughs> so uh, Tarsia is perfect for that. I particularly like the pose of this character for some reason I find it quite serene. There's a nice kind of roundness to the pose and I might use it for something. So again, here, straight in pen doodles, apart from the horse, which was from reference, the rest is without any references. And this was a slightly more finished page with those pen sketches, again using the highlighters as a background here and a shadow here. Both no references, literally just doodling around. I think I was trying to film this, but um, filming myself sketching in the sketchbook is really jarring. I find it really difficult to have something that feels like it's looking over my shoulder. So um, I had to turn the camera off at some point because it just, <laughs> it just felt too weird for this particular page to be filming myself. I'll get used to it one day. <laughs> This is a failed sketch in the sense that I didn't come to a satisfying final version. I really dislike this one here. I dislike the fragile, it's so on the nose, it's so obvious I don't, I don't like it. I also really hate how I drew that head inside there. <laughs> it's terrifying. What's going on with it? Look at those eyes, they're just two black pits. I don't know, I don't know. There's no room for the skull. I don't know what I was thinking. It's hilarious to look at now though. So I tried sketching it again in pen this time so I was I'd be able to edit it a bit more and make it a bit more finished and polished. But the thing is I never came to a satisfying um, decision about what to put in the head itself. I haven't found something that I connect with, something that I really like to put in there. So I haven't actually pushed it any further. I was getting very frustrated by the time I finished drawing all this. I was I was just getting angry at the concept, so I decided to step away. Maybe I'll pick it up one day, but to be honest, the more I look at it, the less I like it. So maybe it will just stay in the sketchbook and will never go anywhere else. 
And then the other side was drawn right after I finished that weird sketch I didn't like because I needed an outlet, I was getting frustrated with drawing and so I decided that I would just pick up my pens again because that seemed to work really well to relax me and make me sketch more loosely and more happily and I drew this. So this was how I felt after I sketched the previous page I showed you <laughs> and then this was a slightly weird sketch that didn't quite work out but that I still more or less like. And this sketch here led to the next finished concept that you'll see in the sketchbook that you'll have seen me sketch also in a previous video of mine. This sketch here led to me drawing this sketch here. So you'll have seen me draw this in my previous vlog that you can watch here if you'd like. And this was so very heavily inspired by obviously what's going on in the world right now. I didn't realise it until I looked at it finished that it was so topical, at least for me. And I, I have a, it has a special place in my heart, this one, because it felt really cathartic and it was one of those instances where I felt like a lot of the frustration I was feeling, a lot of the fear I was feeling, a lot of the admiration I was feeling just went all in one drawing and I only realised it when I finished it but I felt so much better once I drew this. So um, this sketch I, I, I personally really like. This one, I don't. <laughs> this is one... So I, don't, I don't know what happened there. Like there's literally three different colours and how I drew it and it still didn't work out. Like what is going on with that head? Anyway, that's funny. It just makes me laugh when a sketch doesn't work out because it looks silly afterwards to me. And um, I, I like that there's stuff that I don't like in a sketchbook because it shows that, um, you know, there's up and downs and it's not, I can't curate something to always look good. It's like life, you can't curate life to just always be perfect and happy. And uh, I find that I learn more about the stuff that I don't like and about the difficult things I've gone through. Um, so, you know, it's, they're not a bad thing to be able to look back on, I think, at least in my opinion. And then again, <laughs> the, uh, the now uh, familiar messy page in pen, again without any references everywhere here. Once again, a nonsense doodling page. I really like these two, I'll be honest. Like particularly that one. I want to do something with this idea at some point. I'm not sure what it will be. And maybe try and draw this again too. I really like the idea of a jaw, an animal jaw, separating a person in two like that. And in this page, those of you who've seen my previous video, my vlog, will have seen me sketch this out. I really like this idea. No idea what was going on here. I like this one too. So I might explore these two at some point maybe. So this is actually a pretty good example of why I think that pen doodling has been really beneficial to my inspiration and to my overall process. So for example, I started straight in pen for this one. I think I had like a pose on, on my screen, this computer screen that I really liked and I decided to just sketch it out as a practice. But while I was sketching out, I got the idea of splitting the character down in the middle because they had their arms around themselves and it looked like they were trying to hold themselves together so I liked the idea of them being split in the middle like that and trying to keep both of their parts together and I liked this idea so much in pen and it felt it came to me very naturally I didn't have to force an idea to come it just came to me really easily that I wanted to turn it into a more finished sketch so this page is a good example of a fairly linear progression between doing like loose spontaneous pen doodles in, and that progressing into me having a more complete idea that I want to do a more finished sketch with. And then the previous sketch led to this one. It's often the case when I have an idea, I have lots of branching out ideas that follow a similar theme but have slightly different elements to them. And sometimes I explore them, sometimes I don't. In this particular case, I liked this idea almost as much as I liked the previous one, so I decided to sketch it out too. And then once I was done with this one, I felt like I needed something to loosen up again, and so I went back in pen for a bit. And we are now at the end of the sketchbook. The last page of my sketchbook is always the one I'm most intimidated by, because by the time I get to the end of a sketchbook, I just want to be done. I want to be able to close it up and move on to something else. And so the last page of my sketchbooks generally has always felt like something that I kind of 
wasn't very focused on and didn't really put much care into and felt rushed. And that's always been kind of a bit frustrating in itself for me and I wanted to be able to just sit down and put as much care into the last page of my sketchbook as I do into the rest of it. And for this particular one, something that I have wanted to experiment with um, for a long time now, something that I'm not particularly good at, is creating small illustrations that I can use for a variety of different projects like stickers and t-shirts and putting on my red bubble, that kind of thing, animating, making icons out of, that sort of thing. And I don't feel as fulfilled creating small illustration as I do when I create big ambitious paintings that take me days to finish. For someone like me who has an art business where I do derivative products like stickers and t-shirts and notebooks and that kind of thing, it's very useful for me to have a pool of small illustrations like that, that belong to me, that are my style, that are my ideas, that I can use for a variety of different, different applications. And so I need to shift my mindset into understanding and feeling that doing a series of small illustrations like this is just as productive, if not more, as it is spending days on a bigger painting. So in order to find validation in doing something like that, and in order to find some guidance, I went on Skillshare and I looked up a class on um, illustration. So I chose the course Sweet Spots Expressing Big Ideas in Small Editorial Illustrations by Tom Froge? Froge? Not entirely sure how you pronounce his name. He's a really amazing teacher, his courses are generally really engaging. I really like his art style, it's super different from mine, <laughs> but it's really nice to be inspired by someone who's completely different from what I do, it's inspiring and refreshing. And his course is about doing spot illustrations, so tiny self-contained illustrations that can go with like a newspaper article, that kind of thing, a magazine article, and they are usually all in one particular style and they have very direct, very simple ideas, not very complex compositions, that kind of thing. So his course was really, really good. I strongly recommend it if you want to check out anything about illustration, style, working as an illustrator, that kind of thing. He has amazing information. You can see here, I took lots of notes. <laughs> his class is really engaging. I put a link to it in the description if you would like to check it out. But this is how I created this whole spread here. I felt really inspired. I just put his class on and I painted all of these in about a day. And it's probably my favourite spread in the whole sketchbook now. I, I'm so happy with all of these. These were all painted in gouache and I can now use them for lots of different things. So I might put them on t-shirts, I might put them on Redbubble, I might make them into stickers. I know for sure that I have a sticker reward on my Patreon and so I'm pretty sure I'm going to make these two the April stickers, these two probably the May stickers and these in June, something like that, maybe not quite in that order, we'll see. These two are going to be the April sticker for sure and then I'll see what I do with the others but I can now create lots of different things with those. This is such a useful page for me now and it was super super cool to be able to create it and I'm really happy that I finished the sketchbook on this. That's a lie, I finished the sketchbook on this. <laughs> I really enjoyed the previous page so I started doing more and every time I had a new idea I would write it down in my idea booklet so now I've got a bunch of different ideas for smaller illustrations like the previous page. This is an idea that I've had for like years and never quite got around to doing it because it doesn't really feel like it fits into the rest of my work but uh, I just wanted to do it and again this is probably something that I'll turn into a sticker at some point but probably for my patrons we'll see. And there you have it. This is my end of 2019, beginning of 2020 sketchbook. This probably took me technically about three months to finish um, and I work in other sketchbooks at the same time as I work in this one too. So I'm really happy with this one. Every time I finish a sketchbook I feel quite accomplished. It's, no, it's a nice sort of milestone to reach when you finish a sketchbook because it means you have drawn a bunch and even if I don't like everything in it, I like it as an item because it contains the ups and the downs of my process. I find that that's really interesting to look back on when I look back through my old sketchbooks. So I hope you guys enjoyed this sketchbook tour, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you guys are all as well as is possible to be right now. I hope that everyone you love is well also. I have a big announcement video next week so make sure you watch that to know what the future of this channel is going to be. I strongly recommend you turn on notifications if you can uh, so that you're notified when I upload new videos because I'm going to be uploading a bit less but bigger videos and I'll 
explain more about that in my video next week so stay tuned for that and in the meantime I'm going to leave you with some footage of me painting these little guys here while I tell you a little bit more about Skillshare. I hope you guys are well and I'll see you very soon. Bye everyone! So I'm sure most of you are already familiar with Skillshare as a platform, but just in case, here's a little recap. Skillshare is an online learning platform with tons and tons of classes in a broad variety of topics. If you'd like to check out the platform with no strings attached, there is a link in my description below this video that gives you two months of premium membership for free. It's a great place to check out if you're feeling bored or creatively starved, if you're motivated to learn something new, or if you just want something to freshen up your routine. I think drawing, writing, or journaling classes can be a great way to help manage stress, practice mindfulness, feel connected to one another. I know I've definitely taken up watching Skillshare classes a bit more just because I feel like I'm part of a class and it makes me feel a bit less isolated, things like that. So I definitely recommend checking out the link in the description below. The first 1000 of you to use it will get two months of premium membership for free and you can check out the platform with no strings attached and decide if it's something for you or not. And on this note, thank you so much for watching everyone. Take really good care of yourselves and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye everyone.